Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to create uh, a confidence interval and to find the margin of error uh, using StatCrunch. So the formula for the margin of error isn't too bad, but we have StatCrunch here that simplifies things for us. Uh, and we'll plug it into that and makes things pretty nice and easy. So it shouldn't be too long of a video. The steps, I think, are pretty straightforward. Um, first things first, uh, you're probably getting used to this uh, as you've been playing with StatCrunch throughout the course. Uh, first thing you want to click on is Stat. Okay, So click on that and hold down. Uh, you'll see some of the familiar areas like the summary stats that we used before. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is go down to Z statistics. Okay, so you'll see that there. That might not be as apparent. You know, you're looking for something that says margin of error uh, or confidence interval. Uh, and we haven't really talked about a lot of the Z statistics stuff thus far in the course. Uh, but that is what you want to look for. Okay, so you'll see that. Go over. Ooh. Go to one sample, okay? And now there are situations where you use either one of these. Um, for right now, we're going to use with summary. I will show you uh, the situations in a second where you would use with data. But for the most part, we're just going to be using with summary because this is talking about we already have those summary statistics. Uh, think about back here earlier uh, when we've gone over summary statistics. We went in there and we used this to find certain other uh, statistics, okay? And some of those things, such as standard deviation, mean, etc., uh, we already have those now. So let's just say those are given to us in the problem. If you've already gone in and looked in my stat lab, you've probably seen a lot of the problems or things we've gone over previously, uh, and they give you that information. Okay, Because the main things you're going to need for the formula for margin of error are the mean, uh, the standard deviation, uh, and the sample size. Okay, The, the number there, the people that are actually the, uh, the size of the sample. Okay. And if we look in here and we go to with summary, that's what this is looking for. Okay, if I click on with summary, we see we need the sample mean, the standard deviation, and the sample size. Okay, um, an example from page 348 in the book that I'm going to use. So if you have that open, feel free to turn to it. Uh, and it gives us the information here. It tells us that there is a mean of 77. So I'm going to type that in 77. It also tells us that the standard deviation is 58.6. Okay, I will type that in here. Uh, and it also tells us that the sample size is 267. So I'm going to type that in there. Next thing I'm going to want to do is click on the next button. Okay. Uh, we are, of course, going over confidence interval, so don't have hypothesis test checked. Make sure to go down here and click on confidence interval. And then this is also another key part here. And most of the time we're dealing with the 0.95 confidence interval. Uh, but if you did come across a problem that was asking for a 0.90, uh, the 90% one, or 0.99, 99%, you would actually change this value here. So if I want to change it to 0.90, I would change it like that. Uh, in this case, we are still looking for the, uh, the more standard one, that being the 0.95, the 95% confidence interval. Okay. Uh, now to move on to the next step, I once again hit next. Click on that. You don't need to do anything here. I hit calculate and this nice uh, little table pulls up for us. And the really cool thing here is that not only does it tell us um, what our the, the, what the error is going to be there, it actually gives the confidence interval for us. So it kind of makes things a lot easier. If we look here, we can see, okay, here's our mean. Okay. Uh, and then it actually shows us that we what the lower limit is and what the upper limit is. So it already kind of just does that for us, uh, which I really think kind of simplifies things. It doesn't make it uh, where we have to kind of do the subtraction ourselves. It already has that confidence interval set up for us. Okay, um, So that's everything you need right there. Now, you might be going thinking back to say, OK, well, he started out and there was two options when we went into stat. Well, I'll go back there, click on stat again, go into Z statistics, one sample. We have with summary and we have with data. OK, what you're going to do with data, uh, and I won't go too much into this because you're probably not going to see many of them. Uh, but if you did actually have a table of data, OK, so if you look down the left side of the screen here, one of these tables of data, say one of those tables was actually a sample uh, information from something that you were collecting. Uh, so if you already had that table and you didn't have the summary statistics, you didn't have the mean, you didn't have the standard deviation, you didn't have the sample size, and you wanted StatCrunch to figure all that stuff out for you, what you would do is you would load that table. And then in here, you would select the column uh, that you want to pull that data from. It might be all the information from that sample. Uh, and then what StatCrunch would do is it would automatically go through and figure out those things, such as the mean and the standard deviation. Okay. Uh, but mainly for this course, we will be going in, clicking on Stat, uh, going to ZStats, one sample, oops, with summary, and then input those three values, sample mean, standard deviation, and sample size. All right. Hopefully you found that helpful. And as always, if you have any questions, make sure to email me. Thanks.